Now, West Asia could do that, use that too. Not relevance, but certainly direction. The region is on the cusp of a major diplomatic deal, a deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Reports say the United States is mediating. It's, if signed, it would be the deal of the century. Some background first. Saudi Arabia does not recognize Israel. They accuse Israel of occupying land that belongs to Palestine. In fact, most Muslim nations hold the same view and the same policy. But in the last few years, things have changed. Four Muslim countries recognized Israel in the year 2020, the UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, and the Sudan. The question is, could Saudi Arabia be next? Joe Biden is clearly pushing for it. Such a deal could cement his legacy in foreign policy. It would also allay fears of China's rising influence in the region. So what is the plan? Reports say Biden wants to meet Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Both leaders will be in New Delhi next month. They will be attending the G20 summit. And Biden reportedly wants a meeting on the sidelines. The idea is clear. Your junior diplomats can haggle all they want to. In the end, breakthroughs and concessions will only come from the top, meaning from Joe Biden and Mohammed bin Salman. Which brings us to the all-important question, what do Israel and Saudi Arabia want? Well, more details have emerged in the last few days. The Saudis, Saudi demands revolve around three things, security, money, and Palestine. Riyadh wants security guarantees from the U.S. Against whom? Their regional rival, Iran. Iranian proxies have attacked Saudi oil fields and ships, so MBS wants protection. The U.S. has signed such deals with Japan and South Korea. These deals are called mutual defense treaties. Basically, Riyadh wants the U.S. to defend them if attacked. But that's easier said than done. Saudi Arabia, you see, is not Japan or South Korea. Many in Joe Biden's own party oppose the crown prince. So there are going to be political challenges. The second demand is money. MBS knows that the oil taps will run dry at some point. If not today, then later. So he's preparing the kingdom for a future beyond oil. He needs technology for that. And luckily, Israel is a world leader in technology. MBS also wants America's help to build nuclear power plants, again for the same reason. If there is no oil, how will Saudi Arabia make electricity? MBS thinks the answer is nuclear power, and that's what they want. Demand number three is about Palestine. Saudi Arabia will be hoping for some concessions there, maybe more trade and investments for Palestine, or maybe a freeze on new settlements, something they can hold up to the Muslim world. So that's the Saudi wish list. Now to Israel. What do they want from this deal? What do the Israelis want? Well, the symbolism alone will be huge. Saudi Arabia is the cradle of Islam. It is the de facto leader of the Arab and Muslim world. If Saudi Arabia recognizes Israel, others could soon follow. So that's one win. Secondly, more security. Israel has fought seven wars in as many decades, seven wars in seven decades, all of them with Arab powers. So security is paramount for them. I know this sounds like a win-win for all sides. Biden gets a foreign policy win, Israel gets recognition, and Saudi Arabia gets security and technology. They're all winning. Well, guess who isn't winning? Palestine. The world has largely forgotten their plight, especially the Muslim world. In 1967, Arab countries met in the Sudanese capital. This was after the Arab-Israel War. They passed the Khartoum Resolution. It talked about three no's. No recognition of Israel, no negotiations with Israel, and no peace with Israel. But look at how things have changed. Forget peace and recognition. Arab countries are now partners with Israel. How did that happen? Well, Palestine used to be an emotional issue for the Arab world. It was not a geopolitical issue. It was an emotional issue. It was an issue of brotherhood. But that's not the case anymore. Around 60% of the Arab population is below 25 years of age. They're too young to know the history, perhaps, of the wars, of the Nakba, or the occupation. They may have read about Palestinian suffering, but they don't feel as strongly about it. And even if they do, expressing isn't really an option. Most of them live under autocratic regimes. Activism, even for Palestine, is not encouraged. But suppose you want to make a difference. Suppose you want to help Palestine. Who would you talk to? The leadership is split between the Palestinian Authority and the Hamas. Quick note, the Palestinian Authority is based in the West Bank. The Hamas rules over Gaza. They're radical and violent, a bit like diplomatic kryptonite. And the Palestinian Authority? Well, they're outdated. 
Their last elections were in the year 2006. Their president is Mahmoud Abbas. He's 87 years old. He's been president since 2005. So this is not exactly vibrant leadership. The truth is the world has moved on and left Palestine behind. That is a sad reality. Arab countries picked politics over principles, and in the process, they abandoned Palestine. And don't get me wrong, we're not saying do not recognize Israel. Israel is a powerful and proud country. It deserves to be recognized. But so does Palestine. The world promised to recognize both these countries around seven decades back. Well, one of those promises has been forgotten.